I bought my copy of the Anthropocene Reviewed at the two-story chapters on Rideau Street in Ottawa. Ever since my mom attended university in Ottawa while I was in high school, I've had to visit the two-story chapters on Rideau Street every time I'm there. I don't usually spend money at chain bookstores anymore since my friend owns her own bookstore, and I like to support her. But this was my first vacation since the start of the pandemic. I had taken a road trip with my mom, and I was in Ottawa. I had to visit this chapters, and I had to buy some books. The Anthropocene Reviewed was on a shelf near the entrance, and I picked it up without a second thought. And although this chapter's excursion wasn't quite like they used to be, no one could walk around the store with fancy Starbucks drinks in hand, or find a cozy place to sit with their stack of books around them as they decided which ones to take home, it was still nice to be able to browse the shelves with little to no anxiety about the people around me. I got lost in all the different worlds with each book I picked up, and it was a welcome adventure, one I had surely missed. But on our walk home to my grandma's, we got caught in a thunderstorm, and my paper chapter's bag ripped open, and all my books fell into the practical river at my feet. Twice. All my pretty hardcovers fell open on the road, the dust jackets crumpled and waterlogged, the paperbacks already wrinkling and ripped. The wind was so strong that it flipped my umbrella inside out, and I could no longer hold the magical worlds in my other arm, no matter how hard I tried. When they all fell through my grasp yet again, I almost cried and admitted defeat right there in the pouring rain. I wanted to leave the inside-out umbrella in the street, I wanted to go back in time and leave the mall 20 minutes earlier, I wanted to sob. But instead I let out a single cry of frustration, picked up my books and their fallen dust jackets, cradled them in my right arm, grabbed the broken umbrella in my free hand, and ran the rest of the way to my grandma's house in shoes so filled with water that they squished and oozed with every step. My grandma helped me dry and flatten all my books as best as she could by wrapping them in paper towel and setting her heavy gardening books on each one, <laughs> but these books were in bad shape. All but one. The Anthropocene Reviewed had somehow gotten out of the situation with just a tiny rip on the edge of the dust jacket and a few waterlogged page corners. Even as I read it, I forgot this book was part of the thunderstorm fiasco until I neared the end and had to ruffle the pages to get them unstuck. They were in great shape and now had extra crinkle to them, which can't be a bad thing, can it? Now, I didn't read this book immediately after buying it. Who reads a book immediately after buying it anyway? I didn't pick it up until the end of November, more than four months later. I had been having so much trouble reading the past few months, and nothing was keeping my attention. I was in the middle of four or five different novels that I couldn't bring myself to finish, and any new books I tried to start seemed to have too many words on the pages. The only books I could get through were children's picture books or graphic novels. I was having a particularly hard time come November, as I was in tremendous pain from something chronic and undiagnosed, and a friendship I cared a lot about had just ended. I decided to give the Anthropocene Review to try, since I knew I liked John Green's other books, and thought it might have a comfort factor that his Vlogbrothers videos have. And remember when I said that the other books I tried to pick up seemed to have too many words on the pages? This book has basically the most words possible on all the pages, because there's no dialogue like there would be in a fiction book. There's some, but it's not the same. Oh, but the words were wonderful. They were such delightful words to be filling the pages. I could even hear John's voice as I read them. I was about 50 pages in when I brought myself to the hospital, when my pain continued to get so bad that I could hardly walk. I knew there would be a lot of uncomfortable waiting, so I brought my book. And it was painful trying to sit in the waiting room chairs while I waited to see doctors who would tell me that they're also stumped. It was uncomfortable trying to sit while I waited for test results that I knew would come back normal. But I had my book, and I could hear John as I read. I smiled when I otherwise wouldn't have smiled, and I cried when I probably would have otherwise just cried about something else. I sat in the ER waiting room and tabbed my favorite lines with brightly colored sticky notes and smiled with every page turn, with every interesting or funny footnote, with every sentence that made me feel like maybe I'm not alone. I finished it about an hour before I was sent on my way with nothing but a note from my employer for time off. I had a terrible day waiting by myself for more non-answers. But I was a little less by myself than I would have been, if not for John's words. I give the Anthropocene Reviewed five stars.